Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's find the divergence of this function. Well, in spherical coordinates, it looks fairly simple. The vector function equals 1 over r squared times r unit vector. But then when we convert that into Cartesian coordinates, it looks a little bit worse. Hmm. And now what we're going to do is find the divergence. And the divergence can be calculated like this. It's a partial derivative with respect to the x of the x component plus the partial derivative with respect to y of the y component plus the partial derivative with respect to z of the z component of the vector function as defined in Cartesian coordinates. Also, we're supposed to draw the vector field. So let me get a different color. And let's see here. Notice that when r becomes small, 1 over r becomes very big. So it's bigger close to the origin. So that means in all directions, we're going to have a vector that looks large in any direction, x, y, or z. And then as we go further out, it becomes smaller because notice as r gets big, the ratio gets smaller. So this becomes smaller and eventually it gets smaller as we go further and further out. So now we have the vector field drawn in the x, y, and z direction, but you can imagine it's in all directions that way, radially outward from the origin. Now let's go ahead and do this calculation. We want to find the divergence. It's going to be a little bit more challenging, but let's take one at a time. Let's first do this component right here. So we're going to concentrate on just this portion first. So we're going to take the partial derivative, partial derivative with respect to x of x over the quantity x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 3 halves power. All right. So it looks like we're going to need to use the quotient rule, which means that this is equal to the denominator, which is x squared uh, plus y squared plus z squared to the 3 halves power times the derivative of the numerator with respect to x, which is 1, minus the numerator, which is x, times the derivative of the denominator, which would be 3 over 2 times x squared plus y squared plus z squared, to the one half power, because we take one away from the exponent, times the river what's inside, of course, that is relative to the x uh, value, so that would be 2x times 2x. And all that divided by the denominator squared, which is this quantity squared, which gives us x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the third power, because we have to square the denominator. That gets rid of the over 2. Simplifying things just a little bit, this 2 cancels out that 2. And we're going to simplify that by factoring out an x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 1 half power. So this is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 1 half power times what's left. So when we pull that out, we get an x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the first power times 1 minus, here we have x times x times 3. That would 3x squared because this is factored out, so minus 3x squared. And the whole thing divided by the quantity x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 3 halves power. All right, we're doing pretty good. Oh, no, no, not 3 halves power. I forgot that we had squared it down there. Raised to the third power. Okay, so this is going to come down. That becomes a negative one half. So that becomes a five halves in the denominator. And in the numerator, we get the following. We get minus 2x squared plus y squared plus z squared, all divided by the denominator of x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the five halves power. That's, three ha that's six halves minus half is five halves power. And here, this is the partial derivative with respect to x. Now notice if we do the same thing for y and for z, we'll get the same result, but instead of minus 2x squared, we'll get minus 2y squared, and for z, we get minus 2z squared. So if you do the same thing for the two other components, we end up with the following. So therefore, we can say then that the del operator multiplied times the v vector is going to be equal to the x component which is equal to minus 2x squared plus y squared plus z squared, all divided by the quantity x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 5 halves power plus the next component is going to be x squared minus 
2y squared plus z squared all divided by x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 5 halves power plus in the last term would become x squared plus y squared minus 2z squared all divided by the quantity x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 5 halves power. That doesn't look like a 2. There we go. All right. Now notice we have all the same denominators, all that can be written over single denominator. So del dot v is now going to be able to be written as minus 2x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus x squared minus 2y squared plus z squared plus x squared plus y squared minus 2z squared, all that over a common denominator of x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 5 halves power. And interestingly enough, notice we have a minus 2x squared plus x squared plus x squared, that cancels out. A y squared plus y squared minus 2y squared, that cancels out. And a z squared plus z squared minus 2z squared, that cancels out. And it turns out that the divergence of that vector is equal to zero. All that work just to get that simple result. Now, does that make sense? Well, remember that the divergence is a measure of how the vector field spreads out. And notice that as I go further out, the vector field diminishes, and as I go out, it eventually becomes equal to zero. So it doesn't spread out, it diminishes, but it diminishes over a distance out to infinity, and that, as a result, gives us a divergence equal to zero. And that is how it's done.